Welcome, folks. You're listening to F1 Motor Fever Podcast, and today we're hitting the high notes with Jaime Algersuari, the youngest driver to ever set foot in Formula One, and his symphony of speed to melody. Indeed, Jaime's career spun faster than a DJ's turntable. Starting with Toro Rosso in 2009, he was merely a teenager back then. I, a young whippersnapper, all fired up with Red Bull backing him. But the ride wasn't exactly a smooth one, was it, William? Not at all, George. The Toro Rosso car wasn't the fastest on the grid, and the weight of expectations as a Red Bull Jr. was certainly a heavy burden. It was like being asked to compose a symphony with a broken violin. But despite the odds, he struck a few sweet notes, didn't he? Indeed. His performances improved over the years, demonstrating that talent can shine even under challenging circumstances. But then, in 2012, the music stopped. Red Bull replaced him, and our young maestro found himself without a stage. A tough blow for sure, but as one door closed, another opened. Algersuari traded the roar of engines for the rhythm of music. Oh, the adrenaline-fueled world of Formula One to the pulsating beats of a DJ. That's a transition as smooth as a vinyl record spin. And yet, it's a testament to his adaptability. Discarding his racing suit for a DJ set, Algersuari has found a new groove in life. His journey from fast lanes to baselines is not just a career change. It's an epic tale of passion, resilience, and the courage to follow one's heart. A saga that resonates beyond the confines of Formula One, echoing in the vibrant world of music. Algersuari's life is a symphony, enchanting, chaotic, and beautifully unpredictable. So here's to Jaime Algersuari. May his beats continue to inspire as much as his time on the track, because his story, folks, isn't just historic, it's timeless. Good morning, petrol heads. You're tuned into your favorite Thursday morning special on F1 Motor Fever podcast, where we dive into the epic and historical side of Formula One. I'm your host, George, standing in for the usual maestro, Enzo. And I'm William, your trusty commentator, geared up to take you on this exhilarating ride through a world of high speeds, roaring engines, and pounding hearts. That's right, folks. Now, before we get our engines revving, do us a solid, will you? Hit that subscribe button, activate the notifications, and drop us a line in the comments. And hey, why not share the love with your friends and family? It helps keep our gears greased and the show on the road. Absolutely. Every click, every comment, every share goes a long way in keeping this channel alive and your favorite shows coming. And trust us, you don't want to miss out on what's up ahead. Today, we're shifting gears a bit. We're going from the rumble of engines to the rhythm of music. Intrigued? Stick with us for more. Indeed, today's subject is as relevant as it is riveting. We're talking about the transition from the racetrack to the turntable, an epic journey that goes beyond the usual Formula One narrative. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about fast cars and checkered flags. It's about passion, resilience, and the courage to follow your heart, no matter where the road takes you. So buckle up, folks, we're in for quite a ride. Full throttle, mates. Let's get this show on the road. Just to digress a bit, mates, our chat today finds its roots in an article penned by Mike Seymour on the 17th of October, 2023, on the Formula One website. Are you familiar with this one? Indeed I am. It's a fantastic source of information, well-respected in the racing community. But it's always essential to cross-reference, isn't it? Couldn't agree more. So, with our sources checked and revved up, let's get back to the track, shall we? Let's take a pit stop right here. Our chatter today springs from an article written by one Mike Seymour on the 17th of October, 2023, featured on the Formula One website. Ring any bells? Ah, indeed it does. A reliable source held in high regard amongst the racing community. But, as always, corroboration from multiple sources is key, right? Spot on. Now, back to our journey from the race course to the record studio, shall we? Today we're talking about the fascinating journey of Jaime Algersuari, a Spaniard who's seen quite a bit in his 33 years. Algersuari became the youngest ever driver in Formula One history with Toro Rosso in the late noughties. But after two and a half seasons, he lost his seat abruptly, and with it, his love for motorsport. This led him down an entirely different path, 
towards a career in music. Quite a twist, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. A shift from the cockpit to the DJ decks is quite a leap. It's not your typical career change. Can you provide some more details about his early life in motorsport? Well, motorsport has always been part of Al Gursuari's life. His father was a Grand Prix motorcycle racer in the 70s and later, the creator of a popular magazine called Solo Moto, which translates to Only Motorcycles. Initially, it seemed like Jaime was going to follow in his father's tire tracks. So, it's safe to say that his early exposure to motorsport played a significant role in shaping his career, at least initially. But, do we have any examples of other drivers who switched careers? That's an intriguing question. While we don't see too many drivers making such drastic career switches, there have been instances of drivers exploring other passions post-retirement. For example, former Formula One driver Gerhard Berger transitioned into a successful business career. But we'll delve deeper into such instances in our future episodes. Back to Algar Suari, though. This reminds me of a bit of my own childhood. Much like Algar Suari, I found myself at a crossroads, having to choose between footy and karting. Despite my love for both, I eventually opted for karting. It was something about the thrill of speed, I guess. And yet, here you are, talking about those who actually made it to the big leagues. Hey now, hold on just a minute. Not all of us are destined for the spotlight, but we surely can appreciate those who are, can't we? Apologies, mate. I didn't mean to touch a nerve. Let's continue with Algar Suari's story then. Algar Suari's journey in single-seaters is quite impressive. He placed third in his first single-seater campaign in Formula Junior 1600 Italia and then moved to Formula Renault 2.0 in 2006. But the most impressive bit was how Algar Suari beat a competitive 2008 field, including future Formula One race winner Sergio Perez and one-time Toro Rosso driver Brendan Hartley, who's now a World Endurance Championship title holder. It's fascinating to see the overlap of all these racing talents. Absolutely. And it's quite amusing, isn't it? One might even say that Formula One is a bit like a school reunion, where you end up meeting your old competitors. Haha, <laughs> true. Imagine, one day you're battling it out on the junior circuit, and the next, you're sharing a pit lane in Formula One. Haha, <laughs> indeed. Funny how life turns out. Now, back to Algar Suari's journey. Algar Suari's account of his time in Formula Renault 2.0 is quite revealing. He talks about the immense pressure from Helmut Marco, but also emphasizes that Marco's methods, while harsh, were effective. He knew that if he didn't become the British F3 champion in 2008, Red Bull would drop him. It's a real testament to the high-pressure, high-stakes world of Formula One, isn't it? It is. I can't help but think back to my own childhood. I wasn't aiming for Formula One, of course, but I do remember competing in a local football tournament. The coach was ruthless, always pushing us to our limits, expecting nothing less than victory. It was tough, but in retrospect, it taught me a lot about discipline, perseverance, and dealing with pressure. Exactly. Those experiences, while challenging, often shape us in profound ways. And clearly, they played a significant role in molding Algar Suari into the driver he became. So, after proving his mettle in Formula Renault 3.5, Algar Suari got his unexpected break in Formula 1 when Toro Rosso needed a replacement mid-season. He was a mere 19 years and 125 days old, making him one of the youngest drivers in the history of the sport. What's your take on such a young driver being thrust into the high-pressure world of Formula 1? It's a double-edged sword, really. On one hand, these young drivers bring fresh energy and perspective to the sport. On the other, the pressure and expectations are immense. Algar Suari's debut weekend at the Hungarian Grand Prix is a case in point. He started at the rear of the field and finished 15th. It's challenging, but it's also a rapid, in the deep end sort of learning. That's a fair point. It's indeed a high risk, high reward situation. Speaking of which, Let's dive further into Algar Suari's first foray into Formula One. Algar Suari's first season in Formula One was quite a whirlwind, wasn't it? He was thrust into the middle of the season, forced to learn on the fly. And what's more, he juggled his new Formula One duties with his ongoing commitments in Formula Renault 3.5. Now, I may be mistaken, 
but I think Algar Suari clinched his first victory in the junior category just days after his Formula One debut at the Hunger Roaring. That sounds quite plausible, but we should probably check to be sure. Yes, indeed. Let's give Victoria a quick ring then. Hello, Victoria. Hope you're well. Just a quick question about Algar Suari's debut season in Formula One and his concurrent stint in Formula Renault 3.5. As I understand it, he secured his first victory in the Junior Series days after his Formula One debut. Can you confirm that for us? I see. Thank you for that clarification, Victoria. Algar Suari did manage to find his footing in Formula One, despite the initial challenges. He was getting closer to Buemi on pure pace and even managed to score points in Malaysia, Spain, and the season finale in Abu Dhabi. But let's not forget, this is a sport where circumstances can change in a flash. Despite his growing confidence and control, there's always the risk of a setback, an unforeseen challenge, or even a significant change in the competitive landscape. Absolutely. Formula One is as unpredictable as it is thrilling. Every race, every season is a new journey with its unique challenges. Algar Suari's growing confidence and improving performance were promising, but as you rightly pointed out, in this sport, nothing is guaranteed. Yes, and it's that unpredictability that makes it such a fascinating sport. In any case, let's carry on with Algar Suari's journey. It seems he was feeling more comfortable in the Formula One ecosystem. Just to throw in a bit of context here, I came across this intriguing article on the Formula One website. The piece, penned by Mike Seymour, was titled Lights to Flag, Jaime Algar Suari on his Teenage F1 Debut. It was published on the 17th of October, 2023. Oh yes, I'm familiar with Mike Seymour's work, and the Formula One website is indeed a reliable source for all things related to the sport. It's crucial, as you rightly pointed out, to reference such credible sources when discussing Formula One history and individual driver journeys. Absolutely. Now let's get back to Algar Suari's story. Just a quick recap for those who've just joined us. We've been discussing Jaime Algar Suari's Formula One journey, a tale of determination and resilience. This young driver was thrust into the high-octane world of Formula One midway through the season. Despite the initial challenges, Algar Suari managed to find his feet, juggling his F1 responsibilities with Formula Renault 3.5 duties. He showed remarkable growth and confidence, scoring points in Malaysia, Spain, and Abu Dhabi. But as we know, in the world of Formula One, nothing is guaranteed. What do you think? Absolutely. It's a testament to Algar Suari's grit and resilience. His journey underscores the unpredictable yet thrilling nature of Formula One. Now let's delve deeper into his career and the challenges he faced. Yes, indeed. But before we proceed, Let's take a moment to appreciate Algar Suari's resolve and dedication. As fascinating as his journey is, it was not without its share of difficulties. If you're just tuning in, you're right in the middle of an in-depth look back at Jaime Algar Suari's F1 career. This young driver navigated the complex, high-stakes world of Formula One with a determination that belies his years. Not only that, but he managed to find his pace and secure his spot with Toro Rosso for the 2010 campaign, scoring his first points in Malaysia, Spain, and at the season finale in Abu Dhabi. Despite the successes, we are also discussing the unpredictable side of the sport. Does it sound about right? Absolutely. And it's important to highlight that Algar Suari's story serves as a reminder of how Formula One is not just about the glitz and glamour. It's also about hard work, resilience, and the ability to quickly adapt to new challenges. Well said. Now, let's continue with the rest of Algar Suari's Formula One journey. You know, it's fascinating to think about the technical innovations that have shaped Formula One over the years. For instance, in 2010, the big talk of the town was the F-duct. This was a clever system that allowed drivers to manually control an air duct from the cockpit to the tail end of the car. This innovation reduced drag and allowed for higher top speeds, serving essentially as an early drag reduction system, or DRS as we know it today. Now, here's an interesting fact. Not all teams implemented the F-duct, including Algar Suari's Toro Rosso. Yes, that's right. It was quite a technical challenge for many teams. 
But despite not having this tool, Toro Rosso managed to score points that season. It's quite impressive, isn't it? Absolutely. It's like they were running a race with one shoe off and still managing to keep up. But let me tell you, they weren't just keeping up. They were taking strides. Ha ha ha. That's a good one. They certainly did not let their disadvantage hold them back. I think there's a lesson in there for all of us. Ha ha ha. Yes, indeed. There may be some truth in the saying that necessity is the mother of invention after all. Moving on to the 2011 season, things started to look up for Toro Rosso and Alger Suari. This time, the team was able to implement the blown diffuser, another innovative technology that redirected exhaust gases over the rear of the car to increase downforce. It seems the inclusion of this technology led to improved performance, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. There was a marked improvement in their performance that year. And speaking of performance, Alger Suari made a substantial breakthrough at the Canadian Grand Prix that year. Even though the race was marred by tricky conditions, he managed to race his way from the pit lane to eighth position. Quite a feat. Oh, absolutely. And let's not forget his run to sixth on the grid at Spa Francorchamps in 2011. He also bagged seventh place in Italy and South Korea, amassing a total of 26 points for the campaign. That's 11 more than his teammate Buemi. Indeed, Alger Suari was a key player in Toro Rosso's Rise Up the Constructors' Championship standings. From 10th in 2009 to 8th at the end of 2011, that's a significant leap forward. Wait, did you say he finished 7th in Italy and South Korea and 6th at Spa Francorchamps? Blimey, that's impressive. Alger Suari certainly drove his heart out that season. It really does show that perseverance, hard work, and a bit of luck can turn things around. Now, Here's where the story takes a rather dramatic turn. Despite the positive momentum Alger Suari and Toro Rosso had built up over the 2011 season, and even managing to beat big names like Michael Schumacher and Nico Rosberg, Red Bull made a rather bold decision. Yes, they did. It was an unexpected move that shook the Formula One world. They decided to replace both Alger Suari and Buemi for 2012. Can you imagine it was such a shock? The replacements were two other junior drivers, Daniel Ricciardo and Jean-Éric Vergne. Alger Suari was only 21 at the time. His Formula One dream seemed to be over just when it was starting to pick up pace. That's such a cruel twist of fate. Just when you think things are going your way, you're blindsided by a decision like this. It's a rather sobering reminder that in the world of Formula One, despite your best efforts and achievements, things can go pear-shaped in a moment. The uncertainty can be quite daunting. Indeed, it's a high-stakes sport, and sometimes, the decisions are as unpredictable as the races themselves. Even though the decision to replace Alger Suari was not based on results or a sporting kind of decision, as he said, it certainly was a harsh blow. It's like suddenly losing a family you've been with since you were 15. But here's the thing. Despite it all, he still showed gratitude for the opportunity. He acknowledged the chance Toro Rosso and Red Bull gave him, the chance to become a Formula One driver, and to experience such a wonderful adventure. That's quite a mature outlook, isn't it? To be able to look back and appreciate the opportunity, despite the way things ended. Absolutely. And let's not forget, there was a silver lining. Alger Suari was in talks with one of Red Bull and Toro Rosso's rivals over a potential switch. He might have lined up in the black and gold colors of Lotus in 2012 alongside world champion Kimi Raikkonen. Now that would have been something to see. Indeed, it just goes to show that even when one door closes, another one may just open. You never know what opportunities lie ahead. The offer from Lotus was a tempting one, no doubt. To be Kimi's teammate, that would have been a massive opportunity. But Alger Suari held on to his belief that he was doing a good job at Toro Rosso, with the hope of becoming a Red Bull racing driver in the near future. Sometimes loyalty can be a double-edged sword, can it? You want to stay loyal to a team that you've grown with, but at the same time, there might be opportunities knocking at your door. Absolutely. The feeling of frustration that Alger Suari experienced, it must have been overwhelming. Imagine, having beaten many drivers all your life, having just signed no to a contract at Lotus, and then suddenly finding yourself out of Formula One. It's a shocking turn of events. It's a tough pill to swallow, no doubt about that. It's like my old uncle used to say, life is like a Formula One race, you never know when a sudden pit stop might change everything. 
That's quite an apt saying, considering the twists and turns of Algar Suari's career. But remember, there's always a ray of hope. Amidst all the turmoil, he received a call from Paul Hembury at Pirelli. Now, that's something to look forward to in the next part of this gripping tale. Alguer Suari did get back in the car, but not in the way he expected. He did tire testing for Pirelli, which provided him with some much-needed time back on the track. However, when other teams came calling, they were asking for money, a hurdle that ultimately kept him from making a return to Formula One. It just goes to show that the path to Formula One isn't just about skill and drive. There's a financial aspect that many people overlook. Exactly. And that's an unfortunate reality for many talented drivers. In Algar Suari's case, though, his motorsport journey didn't stop there. He attempted to find his place in Formula E and GT racing, but it wasn't the same. It's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Sometimes, despite your best efforts, things just don't work out. What? Algar Suari actually fell out of love with the sport he was once so passionate about? That's something you rarely hear about. He was expecting to race for fun, but he didn't find it enjoyable after Formula One. I can't believe this. He felt he was designed to be an F1. That's the thing about passion, isn't it? Once it's gone, it's hard to find that spark again. And it's a tough reality to face when something you love so much doesn't bring you the joy it once did. For those just tuning in to F1 Motor Fever podcast, we've been digging into the riveting journey of Jaime Algar Suari. From his surprising exit from Toro Rosso and Red Bull to having a shot at joining Lotus, things took a turn when he chose loyalty over new opportunities. The plot thickened with his detour into tire testing for Pirelli and unsuccessful stints in Formula E and GT racing. His passion for racing dwindling, Algir Suari found himself at a crossroads. Quite the tale so far, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. It's a stark reminder of just how unpredictable the world of motorsport can be. One minute you're on top of the world, the next, you find yourself navigating a complex maze of decisions and emotions. True, it's a roller coaster ride of highs and lows. But let's not forget, Algar Suari was a talented lad. He had the skill, the drive, and the passion. It's just a shame that it didn't pan out as he'd hoped. Indeed. But as the old saying goes, that's motorsport, isn't it? Full of twists and turns. Let's carry on. So, Algar Suari took a leap of faith and sought help through therapy. It's interesting how when he spoke about motorsport, he was downbeat. But when the conversation turned to music, his passion ignited. It was clear that he had another love waiting in the wings. Hold on a minute. I'm going to ask a somewhat naive question. Do many drivers have secondary passions or hobbies outside of racing? Hey, <laughs> I never thought I'd hear such a question from you. It's like asking if footballers enjoy a good game of ping pong. But go on, humor me. Why are you asking this? Just thinking about our listeners who aren't that knowledgeable about Formula One yet. It's good to know that these drivers have lives outside the cockpit, isn't it? Well, I suppose so. But let's not bore our audience with tales of racers watering their bonsai trees or knitting socks. They might switch channels. You'd be surprised. It actually gives a more human touch to these drivers, who are often seen as somewhat superhuman. So yes, it may seem a bit obvious, but it's still quite interesting. Fair point. All right then. Moving on to how Algar Suari channeled his passion into music. He had already been producing music while racing, but his exit from Formula One gave him the time to truly delve into his craft. And thus, DJ Squire was born, and he's been lighting up dance floors all over Europe ever since. Quite a change from the racetracks, wouldn't you say? Algar Suari put it beautifully. He compared being in the music industry to another racing career. Just as in racing, you need to invest a lot of time in the studio, you need to understand the industry, and you have to build your career. And he certainly did that. He started releasing records on small labels, and after a period, he launched his own label, Anims. Quite a departure from racing, but it seems he's found his groove. And there's more. He's also started a project with another artist called Pole Position. Now isn't that a cheeky nod to his racing past? Ha ha ha. That's a good one. But let's not speculate. It could be just a coincidence. Oh, come on. A former Formula One driver involved in a project called Pole Position just out of coincidence? I think not. It does sound convenient, but let's not start a rumor mill here. 
Let's stick to the facts, shall we? Hey, hey. All right. No speculative stories then. Let's wrap this up. Algar Suwari has acknowledged that making a name in the music industry is a slow process. There's a lot of competition, a lot of experienced people, and an abundance of good music out there. But he's enjoying the journey and that's what matters, right? Absolutely. In the end, it's all about following your passion, wherever it may lead you. So, after a tumultuous ride on the racetracks of Formula One, Algar Suwari has found his rhythm in the beats and bass of the music industry. It's quite the transformation, isn't it? Indeed, it's an inspiring journey. From the high-speed turns of the Formula One tracks to the pulsating energy of the music studios. And the best part is, he seems really happy with how things are going. Absolutely. Imagine waking up every day and doing something that you're truly passionate about. It's an incredible feeling, I'm sure. Not to mention the excitement of numerous projects and a bright future ahead. And that's the essence of life, isn't it? To find your passion and chase it relentlessly. It's not about the destination, but the journey that takes you there. Algar Swari's story is a testament to that. Well said, pal. And with that, we're nearing the end of our special episode, but stick around. We've got a few more things to touch on before we wrap up. So don't go anywhere, folks. Thanks for tuning in to F1 Motor Fever Podcast today. We've had a fantastic journey exploring the life and career of Algar Swari, his highs and lows in Formula One, and his remarkable transition to a music career. If you've enjoyed this episode as much as we did, don't forget to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you won't miss any future episodes. Sharing our podcast with your friends and family would mean the world to use. Your support helps us create more great content for you all. And if you have any thoughts, don't be shy. We love reading your comments. Who knows, your insights might even make it into our next episode. Hey, hey. And oh, keep an eye out for something exciting on the horizon. Shout out to Enzo. I'm sure you'll love this episode. To all our listeners, we're so grateful for your support, and we're already looking forward to the next episode. Absolutely. We're all in this journey together. We might not know where the road leads, but as long as we've got each other and our love for Formula One, it'll be a ride worth taking. George and William. Pedal to the metal. Keep your gaze on the road. Our channel's content is pure gold. See you in the next episode, folks.